And a lot of the times they're talking to the same people. Sometimes they're not. A lot of times they are. But they don't talk to each other. Mm -hmm. At this point in time, the FBI shared as little as possible with the police. And the police shared as little as possible with the FBI. For whatever reason, they didn't like each other. They didn't trust each other. Um, they just didn't share information. So Now, is this a just heavy? Would you say this is normal for this era? This is or, normal for this era. This is okay. not like a Kenosha specific, specific thing. thing. Okay. No, this was just how the FBI operated. They didn't share information with local police very well. And then is it, would you say that because the FBI wouldn't share anything, the police are just like, yeah, we're not going to share anything back to, with you then? I'd say that. Okay. My impression from what I've seen is the police are better at sharing with the FBI than the FBI is at sharing with, with the police. police. And when I've given talks, I've had people tell me, you know, that they were retired law enforcement or their dad or their husband or whoever was retired law enforcement. And they had similar experiences. They're like, we'll back you up on that completely. <laughs> like the FBI wouldn't give a shit. Wouldn't give us crap. Sorry. Wouldn't <laughs> give us crap. You can keep that in there. So, yeah. So, like, this is not unusual. I don't think it's like that anymore. I think they've gotten better. But that was not unusual. So, it's interesting looking at the documents and being like, if you guys had talked to each other, you might have gained more right, headway right. on this. Because you're, you're basically duplicating efforts, wasting a lot of time here. But either way. So, this investigation is ongoing. They Now, at least they have the body back. As we talked about in an earlier episode, in the middle of this investigation, the police chief's wife kills the police chief's mistress. Mm -hmm. So I won't go into that whole thing again because we did, did an episode on that. That doesn't help the Kenosha Police Department because their chief is forced to resign. They have to get a new chief. This is now, you know, there's an internal investigation. They're kind of They've got other problems right now. You know, not that they don't want to solve this case, but this is not good yeah. for the police department. So that shakes things up. Then the FBI is still putting pressure on Weezer Cavelli. Again, at this point, it's no longer a kidnapping, so that's not the primary concern because they're already cracking down on gamblers anyway. They're still kind of putting the pressure on him. One night, he he leaves the bar. A car with flashing lights shows up. He gets put in the back of that car, driven off. Nobody knows where he goes. Several people see this happen. Mm -hmm. The next day, he comes back. He goes to the police, and he tells them that the FBI forced him into the car, drove him to the shallow grave site, hung him by his belt over the hall and would repeatedly like click their guns at him, like not actually shoot him, but like make the noise like they could fire. Mm -hmm. Basically we're like, tell us what you know, confess to this, whatever. Mm -hmm. And he tells the police this and the police are, you know, they think he's full of crap. Mm -hmm. They know who he is. They know, you know, that he's, deeply mob connected and they don't generally believe that the fbi kidnaps and and threatens to shoot people okay they do their they do their due, due diligence on this you know they go around they ask people several people did see him get put into a car with flashing lights that part held up they went back out to the site and they did find fresh shoe prints there including Weezer Cavelli shoe prints. Mm -hmm. If he was faking it, he at least bothered to go out there and fake it. He didn't just drive out of town, stay in a hotel for the night and come back. They didn't know what to do with this. They still didn't think it was the FBI. If it was the FBI, they obviously weren't going to admit to it. Mm -hmm. And I, to this day, do not know what happened okay. here because... I also do not think that this is something the FBI would do. However, <laughs> the FBI clearly made it known in their internal documents that he was the weak link that they wanted to target the hardest. This would definitely be targeting the weakest link. And we know now, 
Today, what we didn't know then is that the FBI did some shady stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, they they did break into people's homes and and do things uh, that were clearly illegal and did some very questionable stuff. I don't know that they did. I get, I again have my doubts that they did. I can't say that they didn't. Like this this is clearly could go either way in my opinion. The the biggest thing that I find suspicious about hearing this is that you said at this point the FBI this is kind of not their investigation. Right. For them to do something that dramatic seems very suspicious to me. Mhm. It almost seems more to me like like the Kenosha police would go do this mm -hmm. rather than the than the FBI because the FBI, unless there was like some rogue agent in the FBI that's just obsessed with this case and can't let it go or something <laughs> yeah. like that. But it would seem more like the police would be the ones to do that because they're the ones that actually are getting pressure to solve the case. Yeah. Yeah, I hear that. That's really suspicious to me. And I, and I don't think it would have been the police because Kenosha, although it is a sizable town, most of the the gamblers and, and other, you know, mob-related people, like they knew who the police were. So you couldn't really do that and them not know who you were. That's That would be a tricky thing to pull off. The FBI is easier to pull off. Like the FBI, for example, when the FBI put hidden microphones inside the Shorecrest Hotel, which is where um, the Bellstery family hung out, a couple of them actually lived there. When they put the microphones in there, it wasn't a Milwaukee officer or Milwaukee agent who did it. They got an outside guy who was like a specialist in wiring up stuff to come in and do it. Mm hmm if he had been hanging out the last couple of days, you know, kind of casing the place, nobody would have said, oh, yeah, that's the FBI agent. Like, they knew who a lot of the Milwaukee FBI agents were because they're just like, they're always being followed. So at some point, they kind of know who the guys are. Yeah. But they'd bring in the outside guys. In this case, like we know in Kenosha, it was primarily one FBI agent, and that's Bill Higgins. If this had happened and it was FBI it wouldn't have been Bill Higgins it's doing it. It, have done it, it yeah. would have brought in some guys from another city to do it. Again, I don't know. I I tend to think that the FBI wouldn't do it, but I know enough shady things they've done, I can't rule it out. I'm going to throw out another hypothetical that I think it could be. Okay. Is what if the mafia realized that – or? or just Steve DeSalvo or whatever, mm -hmm. realized that this guy was their weakest link. Mm -hmm. And what it, what do you think of the idea that they could have done it just to see, just to confirm, like, will he crack Okay, under pressure? Sure. Do you think that's a possibility? That is a bust. You know, and I'll, I'm going to give you some real good credit there because <laughs> I had not considered that. Always in my mind, it was always either it was the FBI or it was faked. I don't think I've considered the possibility that that the mob goes in and does it to their own guy to test him. I don't think I've ever considered that, but that's actually a really reasonable possibility. But the other thing I would say to this is that if you, I would almost lean towards if you never have an instance of the mafia testing their members like that. Mm -hmm. I think that's highly unlikely because I feel like if that was a thing the Milwaukee M Mafia would do, you would have an instance of that in your knowledge where maybe where they were exposed for doing that. Maybe you know. Yeah, I don't know. Like that's I'm not aware of them having done that, but that actually is not a bad idea. And you you have to look <clears throat> at it like we like we say. Yes, the FBI did a lot of shady things in that era, possibly. But yeah. FBI, mafia, which one in your head is more likely to do something like that? To me, it's the mafia. Maybe. to say it. And I don't know if that's fair or not. You know, that Maybe. might just be p bad perception. I'm going to put it that it's more likely they did it than the FBI. Maybe. you got to really understand how bad the, the, mafia, the, 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 the FBI was at this point. I mean... <laughs> 